going to take you with me. <laughs> Governor Lawrence, Senator Clark, Dick Dilworth, ladies and gentlemen. I want to uh, express to you a uh, very uh, great appreciation to you for coming out on a Saturday morning. I think uh, you probably know why we're here. We're here for the Democratic Party. We're here to elect Democratic candidates. Your Congressman, uh, Doc Morgan, who is in Washington, where they hope to adjourn the 87th Congress at this noon, is there in Washington instead of here because he's working for the passage of a public works acceleration bill which will provide jobs for this state and country. And I think it's a good thing he's there because when this bill came up in the House of Representatives, when this bill came up in the House of Representatives, 88% of the Republican members of the House voted no. Can you tell me how any citizen of this state who has lived with unemployment one half a million people out of work in this state, the highest rate with the exception of West Virginia in the country, can you tell me how they can elect Republican candidates who vote against public works, who vote in the Senate as they did against nationwide standards of unemployment compensation, who vote against housing, who vote against minimum wages, who vote against area redevelopment. Will you tell me what they're for? I ask anyone in this state after 30 years to tell me one thing the Republican Party's for, one thing which they can point to and say, this is a Republican program for the people. I can tell you all afternoon what they're against. But I have yet to see, and I was in the Congress for 14 years and as president, one great program which serves the people, which they can say, this is ours. They can tell you what they're against, but they can't tell you what they're for. And I think in 1962, we need a Democratic House and Senate who's for programs, not against them. Doc Morgan, the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, one of the three or four most important positions in the country. This last two years, we passed the Peace Corps, the Disarmament Agency, the Alliance for Progress. We put our foreign aid on a long-term basis. All of these programs came out of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, led by your congressman. A congressman from this district speaks for the United States, and all people stretching around the world are affected beneficially or adversely by his good judgment. I hope you send him back because he is a distinguished congressman. And more important than that, he's a distinguished American who stands for the best that's in this country. And I know that you're going to return him. We need him. And I hope the rest of them, Congressman Holland, who wrote the manpower retraining, Congressman Dent, and all the rest of these Democrats. I know it's customary for Democratic presidents to speak for Democratic candidates. But that's just not the issue this year. The issue is what kind of a Congress we're going to have in January 1963. Every program we send up in the next two years, are we going to lose as we lost medical care for the aged, as we lost the Department of Urban Affairs, as we almost lost minimum wages, as we lost supplemental unemployment compensation, as we lost our agricultural bill, as we lost our higher education bill, are we going to have vote after vote, which this country needs, defeated by three, four, or five? Or are we going to elect a Congress which is committed to progress, which this country so desperately needs in a difficult and dangerous world? <laughs> Senator Clark, Senator Clark, who wrote the Area Redevelopment Bill, who wrote the Public Works Bill, who speaks for Pennsylvania and the country, you already have one Republican senator from Pennsylvania, and that's enough. I hope you re-elect Senator Clark. Stand up. 
stand up there. Here he is. You just send him back by a big boat. All right, I'm going to tell him now. Now, I hope also you elect a distinguished Democratic governor, a man who was mayor of Philadelphia twice and district attorney, who served with the Marines in World War I and World War II, who I think stands for the best that's in the Democratic Party, Dick Dilworth, who can make a great governor of a great state of Pennsylvania. You stand up, man. None of these candidates want to stand up. They just sit there and watch me work. But I want you on November 6th. I want you to come out and vote for them. Not just because we want Democrats or Republicans, but because the record shows, as it's shown for 30 years, that every time we try to do something for jobs or for security or for education, the Republicans vote no, the Democrats vote yes, and therefore we want your help. 84% of the Republicans against unemployment compensation in a state which has had 500,000 people, 89% against a minimum wage of a dollar and a quarter, 88% against a housing bill. What kind of a party? What does that stand for in 1962? What kind of a country do you want in 1962 and 1963 and 1964? There isn't anyone here who isn't the beneficiary of what Franklin Roosevelt did in the 30s. Now, what are we going to do in the 60s? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to come back here to this community. I'm glad to come back to this state. And I'm proud to stand here, though I'm not a candidate for office, and in all good faith, ask you to give us some people who in 1963 and 64 will build a strong America upon which the freedom of this world depends. Thank you.